The Will Smith Chris Rock Oscars debacle has recently created a lot of buzz around the topic of alopecia, which is the general medical term referring to hair loss. Actor Will Smith's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith, reportedly suffers from a subtype of alopecia, the subject of Chris Rock's controversial jokes for the evening, which culminated in a shocking physical confrontation. So what is alopecia and what are the most common causes of hair loss? That's what I'll be reviewing in today's episode. Unlike Will Smith's punch, you don't want to miss this. If it's your first time here, I'm Dr. Madge. Consider subscribing to this channel for up-to-date medical topics and headlines. Here's a quick review of some of the top causes of hair loss. First of all, alopecia areata. Although not a very common subtype of alopecia, this is actually the specific type that has affected Jada Pinkett Smith, and it's a condition that causes a rather sudden loss of specific, distinct, round, oval patches of hair on the scalp. It is an autoimmune disorder, which means that the body erroneously regards part of itself as foreign, and in this case, the hair follicles, and mounts an immune response. There tends to be a genetic component, and people can actually lose hair on other parts of the body as well, yes, such as the eyelashes or even eyebrows. I've got plenty to go around if you need some. However, about half of the people with alopecia areata will regrow the hair within one year. Yes, overall, it is a cosmetic condition and it's not like life-threatening, but can certainly cause great emotional distress, especially for women. And unfortunately, it is no longer the only cause of emotional stress now for the Smith family. Besides alopecia areata, however, there are other numerous more common causes of hair loss. Whereas alopecia areata tends to create distinct round losses of hair on the scalp, like I mentioned, other types of hair loss tend to be less distinct, more diffuse, and often more gradual. So here are some of the top culprits. Alopecia androgenetica. By far the most common cause of hair loss in both men and women. This subtype of hair loss has not only a genetic component, hence the term genetic, but also a hormonal one, hence the term androgen, which refers to hormones. Again, the pattern is often diffuse, thinning in women, and a male pattern loss in men that seem to worsen with age through time. So look at your family members. Do they have similar hair loss issues? Family members are often also affected, most especially with one or more parent, and the genes are passed down from one generation to the next. You can thank your parents for that. It makes one envious of cousin its lineage, doesn't it? Thyroid disorder. Hypothyroidism, which means low thyroid hormone, can also cause diffuse hair thinning. And there's also a genetic component as Hashimoto's, also an, another autoimmune condition, but which, one in which the body regards the thyroid gland as foreign and mounts an attack there, and it can be inherited. As a result, the thyroid gland shuts down and the production of thyroid hormones slows down and it slows down your metabolic processes. It can also cause constipation, cold intolerance, depression, weight gain, fatigue, and hair loss. Basically everything slows down. Easily screened with a blood test. Chronic iron deficiency. Now this is more of a concern for menstruating women who tend to bleed more in any way either more frequently or greater duration or simply with increased flow. Strict vegetarians who lack iron in their diet are also at risk for this. However, all iron deficiency anemia requires close observation and follow up with the doctor to determine the cause, most especially in those age 40 and above as microscopic loss of blood in the stool is a more serious concern. Medications. Now certain medications can also cause hair loss, such as chronic steroids. And no, I'm not talking about the Arnold type, sorry. I'm referring to the ones used to treat various autoimmune disorders, such as rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and psoriasis. Hormonal contraceptives. Hormonal replacement therapy. Lithium. Amiodarone, which is a heart medication. Anti-seizure drugs and chemotherapy. It is typically reversible, however, as the discontinuation of the medication often does regrow the hair. Stress. Now, experiencing a traumatic or highly stressful life event can cause hair loss about three to six months down the line. However, it is reversible and the hair will regrow once the stressor has improved. 
Traction. Now, interestingly, a chronic traction on the hair follicle can also cause hair thinning, especially in the front of the hairline here. This is most apparent in women who tend to wear their hair up in a ponytail like, or bun consistently, and I've seen this actually quite a bit. If the hair loss tends to be more apparent towards the front of the scalp, try wearing your hair down for a certain amount of months. Polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS. PCOS is quite common and is reportedly affecting one out of 10 women who suffer from it and may go undiagnosed. I've covered this topic several times prior, so you can actually check out the links in the description down below. Now, PCOS is a hormonal imbalance that causes irregular periods, acne, excessive hair growth on the face or the body, easy weight gain, difficulty losing weight, and unfortunately, diffuse scalp hair loss. Pregnancy. Interestingly, women tend to experience an increase in hair growth during pregnancy. However, after giving birth, there's a sudden fall in the hormone levels, which can actually cause hair loss. Fortunately, most women gradually do return back to their pre-pregnancy hair status through time, however. There are numerous other causes of alopecia, such as syphilis, lupus, which is an, another autoimmune disorder, and tinea capitis, which is a fungal infection of the scalp. Another word for it is ringworm. However, they are less common. An initial visit to your doctor can quickly rule out some of the more common culprits that we just discussed and may include a blood test. But if a cause is not easily discernible, a referral to a dermatology is an option. So you all, I know I've taken a nice little break from these videos because they're super time consuming and I'm a one woman show. Did you guys know that? I do my own editing. Now let's face it. I'm not the world's greatest editor. I don't think Hollywood is gonna come knocking at my door anytime soon to help edit their movies, but I do make an effort and I seriously enjoy it. Not only that, like I think what really motivates me is like the fact that I can kind of be your guide to help translate some of this medical jargon, trying to arm you with the information that you would have before you can actually go in so you can have a meaningful conversation. I know I've been kind of like lagging on making these videos, but life kind of gets in your way. But I'm definitely dedicated to this channel. There's no way I'm going anywhere. Anyways, I want to thank you for sticking through it all with me and uh, continuing to watch my videos. And if you ever have any topic suggestions, I'm always, always open to hearing what those are. I do plan to do more intermittent fasting videos throughout time. Have a good one. Bye. Now, if you found the information valuable, which is always my goal, give it a like, hit that red subscribe button along with that notification bell next to it so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And please feel free to share it with someone else who may find it useful. Hair loss is common. Well, thanks for tuning in. Stay hair healthy and I'll catch you next time.